Hey everyone, Jason here. Welcome to my knot channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to back up your knots and make them safer. There are a few different ways to make your knots less likely to fail and safer to use. In this video, I'm going to show a couple ways that I back up my knots. To begin, it's important to know that all rope and cordage is rated for specific uses and has specific purposes. The materials used and the way the rope is made play an important part in the structure of the rope itself, so be sure to use a rope that's best suited for your needs. It's also important to know that all rope and cordage wears out over time and from use. Sometimes the wear isn't visible on the outside of the rope, but the inner strands may be worn or broken. Taking proper care of your rope, including using a proper way to coil and store it when not in use, storing it in a proper place, examining it for wear, and replacing it after known high stress uses are all important parts of safety when using rope. If you'd like to see a great way to coil your rope to keep it free from tangles, then I recommend my video, a simple trick everyone who uses rope should know, how to coil rope and paracord. I'll put a link in the description and also at the end of this video. Now let's have a look at how to back up your knots for added safety. To begin, we're going to tie a basic slip knot. As you know, the slip knot creates an adjustable loop in a rope. The working end slides freely through an overhand knot, but can slip out of the overhand knot if we don't back it up. The slip knot is often used as a stopper knot when on its own, but when tied around an object, it's a slipped half hitch. But let's focus on today's video and backing up our knots. To back up a slip knot, we have two options. The first option is to tie a simple overhand knot in the tail end. The overhand knot will work as a stopper knot and help prevent the end from slipping through. This knot is known as the stopped loop. The overhand is probably the most common stopper knot, but because it has a relatively small diameter, it can sometimes work its way through the knot and still fail. Another option is to tie a figure eight stopper knot instead of the overhand stopper knot. The figure eight stopper knot is a larger diameter knot and so it's less likely to slip through and cause failure in your knot. When you tie a slip knot with a figure eight stopper knot as seen here, the knot is called a neck halter knot because it's often used to hold large but docile domestic animals. Another way we can back up our slip knot is by using a half hitch tied to the standing line. In this example, once we have our slip knot tied, we simply wrap the working end around the standing part one more time and tie a half hitch with the tail end pointing down away from the loop as shown here. We can leave the half hitch tied away from the loop, but to make it more secure, we can adjust the placement of the half hitch by sliding it towards the loop. The two knots will nest together and the loop knot will be backed up. This knot combination is actually called an Englishman's loop. Let's have a look at backing up another simple knot. This time we'll use a square knot. The square knot is a common knot and although it's commonly considered a secure knot, it can come untied depending on the rope material and how the knot is being used. Something I haven't mentioned until now is that when you're tying your knots, consider whether you'll be backing them up and how much rope you need. If you tie your knots too close to the ends, then you might not have enough rope to complete your backup knots. Now, just like the slip knot, when we tie the square knot, we can add a stopper knot to the tail end of both of our working lines. And similarly, if the ends slip towards the knot, the stopper will help prevent it from passing through the square knot. The problem in this case, and with other knots, is that sometimes the knot loosens a great deal and the stopper knot will still pass through. For this reason, I prefer to tie the half hitch method of backing up a knot, and I feel it provides a little more security. Some people might say that the problem with the half hitch method of backing up a knot is that when you tie onto your working line, you create some additional wear on the line. To me, there's no question that every knot you tie in your rope will create wear in the line. Whether you use a stopper knot or a half hitch as a backup, there will be some wear. And that's why it's important to maintain proper care of your ropes, use them for the purpose they're designed for, and replace them when replacement is required. So there you have it, two methods for backing up your knots to make them safer. Now, as promised, here's a link to my video, a simple trick everyone who uses rope should know, how to coil rope and paracord. Thanks for watching.